We're going to do an example of a combined inequality here. Now, just as a quick reminder, a combined inequality is a sentence that has two inequality symbols that are joined either by the word or or by the word and. So we'll just do this example now. Three times a certain number is less than six, and this same certain number added to two is greater than one. So we are asked to write a combined inequality statement to represent this information and to find the range of values of real numbers for which the statement is true. So we let our certain number be equal to x. Now, we are told that 3 times a certain number is less than 6. So our certain number is x. 3 times our certain number, well that would be 3 times x, so that is 3x is less than 6, so less than symbol, 6, and, so you see the word and here, this same certain number, so that is x again, added to 2, so plus 2, is greater than 1. So we have now written a combined inequality statement. As we've just said, it contains two inequality symbols and that is joined by the word AND. Now because the word AND is used to join these two statements, this is an example of a conjunction. We must solve for values of x that make both the statements true. This will give us the range of values of real numbers for which the statement is true, which is what the question asked for. So now we'll just solve these. So we have 3x is less than 6 and x plus 2 is greater than 1. Dividing both sides of the inequality by 3, we get that x is less than 2 and subtracting 2 from both sides of the inequality here, we get that x is greater than 1 minus 2, which gives us x greater than minus 1. Now we're representing x less than 2 on the number line. So 2 is not included, but all real values less than 2 are included. And now we will represent x greater than minus 1 on the number line. Now it is a good idea to draw both number lines directly underneath each other with the same scale so that you will be able to see the overall solution set clearly. So we have that x is greater than minus 1. So we have an open circle at minus 1 as minus 1 is not included. But all real values greater than minus 1 are included. Now because the word and is used to join these two statements. We want to find the x values that make both the statements true. So we want to find where our solution sets overlap. So looking at the two solution sets, you can see that they overlap from here to here. So representing this final solution set then on the number line, so this is our overall solution set, we have an open circle at 2 and an open circle at minus 1. So these values are not included, but all real values between minus 1 and 2 are part of our solution set. And we would write this as x is between minus 1 and 2. So this is our answer and this is how our answer is represented on the number line. So we should check that we are correct. Any real value between minus 1 and 2, if you substitute that value for x back into our original inequalities, so up here, back into these both inequalities, both statements should be satisfied. However, if we fill in any real value that is outside of our solution set, then both 
inequality statements will not be satisfied. So we'll just check this. So looking at our solution set, we will test a value that is not part of it, the solution set. So we will test minus 2. So our original inequalities were 3x less than 6 and x plus 2 is greater than 1. So filling in minus 2. So we get that minus 6 is less than 6 and 0 is greater than 1. Now in order for minus 2 to be part of our solution set, both inequality statements must be satisfied. So if you look at the first part, minus 6, less than 6, this is true. And we must have this also being true, 0 greater than 1. Now 0 is not greater than 1. So because both of our statements are not true, then minus 2 is not part of our solution set as we have seen. So we'll check a value that should be part of our solution set then. So we will test the value 0. Now 0 is part of the solution set as it is a real number between minus 1 and 2. So when you fill in 0, you should get that 0 is less than 6 and 2 is greater than 1. Now we know that 0 is part of the solution that we obtained. So if we are correct, both these statements should be true. So 0 less than 6, this is true. And 2 greater than 1, this is also true. So because we have satisfied both of our inequalities, we must satisfy both because the word and is used then 0 is part of the solution set, as we found out. So we will test another value now that is not part of the solution set. So looking back up at our solution set, we will test a value that is greater than 2. So we will test the value 3. This is not part of our solution set, and so it should not satisfy both inequalities. So we will test the value 3. So when you have filled in 3 into our original inequalities, we will obtain that 9 is less than 6 and 5 is greater than 1. Now 9 less than 6, this is not true. And 5 greater than 1, now 5 is greater than 1, that is true. But you've already obtained a false statement over here, 9 is not less than 6. So therefore you have failed to satisfy both inequalities and so 3 is not part of the solution as we expected. So back up here again, our answer is x is a value between minus 1 and 2 and again here is how it's represented on the number line. So only real values between minus 1 and 2 will satisfy both of our inequalities and thereby it satisfies the overall combined inequality statement which we had at the start, back here.